Hello everyone, I'm the Hobbygit, and today we're going to talk snortlings. Specifically, snortling skill. Right, so, a bit of background. If you've been living under a rock, that's probably not a good thing to say at this moment in time, isn't it? But if you've been um, sort of isolated in the middle of nowhere, oh no, no that doesn't work either. Um, if you've not noticed yet, there we go. The more recent sort of um, previews the GW has put up on their Warhammer community site of the new impending Snotling Blood Bowl team, then you may not have seen them. Um, I've I've actually got the pictures. I'm going to be using them in this video. Hopefully, GW aren't going to be cross with me for doing that. Um, we'll see. <laughs> um, I'm mostly going to be sort of challenging certain things that have been said. Not necessarily negative, not necessarily with any kind of scorn or anything, but just to kind of set the record straight to talk about the scale of these snotlings. Are they too big to be snotlings? Are they too small to be snotlings? Are they the right scale for snotlings? Um, and various other things. Now, to cut a long story short, if you don't particularly care, they're about right. They they are bigger, and continuing Games Workshop's sort of upward trend for subtle skill creep, there's certainly some absolute justification in that kind of discussion. But they're not that ridiculously scaled, as some people are saying. There's kind of one word that really sort of describes them. But other than that word, um. You know, it's 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 not a straightforward thing. Um, they are well. Obviously, we can only really sort of go off the pictures so far. But I've amassed a small collection of models below me that I'm going to use with this camera uh, of a mixture of sort of grots, nobblers, um, and snotlings, and the actual snotling pump wagon, um, just as a kind of way, uh, just to show off a couple of my models partly, but also. To kind of give you a, an idea of, of scale. And we're going to see if we can try and figure out whether or not these things are a little bit too big. I personally think they're still going to look small compared to grots. Particularly when you've chucked paint on them. Um, this video was a long time in coming. I wanted to do it a little sooner. I wanted to seize the zeitgeist. Um, but I kind of kept putting it off feeling that I wasn't quite ready to cover this video. Um, and also, I didn't really want to do this in kind of a snarky tone. I got a little bit irritated by by some of the claims for skill that were made in various sort of YouTube comments and online on, on Facebook and things. I had to kind of take a step back. I can be a little obsessive about these things and sometimes just assume that everybody has an idea for skill on the basis, you know, on that basis. But... Uh, the way that GW has taken their pictures and given how few people seem to really understand an awful lot about how Blood Bowl works kind of suggests that an awful lot of people feel these models are far bigger than they actually are. And I think that's what we really need to talk about today. Also, on top of that, after we're done with this snotling thing, because I don't think it's going to take too long to do the dispelling of the various... Um, or to cover the, the miniatures in any great detail, but we are going to talk about how cool they are as well. That's another thing that we'll do, because I really like these models. And I'm quite excited for the prospects of, of working with them to use them for things not intended, like using them for not Blood Bowl. Um, I think there's definitely some possibility there. But also I want to kind of take a little bit of a detour from our usual sort of um, hobby focus sort of thing um, to also talk about some of the things that I'm planning to do in the future. I've actually written down a little list of all of the various sort of things that I'm currently doing in the hobby, and it's not a comprehensive list. It is a terrifyingly long one, though. Full A5 sheet, and it's full. It's full of things. So I want to talk about those. And don't worry, you won't need to remember it all, um, but um, it's kind of, I was kind of reflect on whether or not I had too much. I didn't want to overburden you guys with too much information, but I thought I would talk about some of the things that I'm working on. I've got a few things that I'm going to focus on primarily, but having such a long list, thinking about it for this channel, 
it's quite good because this means there's quite a diverse list there, which means there's quite a lot of diversity of content going on. Uh, there's a lot of things for you guys to see, some of which you might find interesting, some of it you might not. Um, but I thought I would mention everything that I'm kind of into and see what kind of audience I've got and see what people want to see. Now, I know that a few of my YouTube friends who are orc-focused have given me a lot of viewers, so at the moment I'm expecting a, a certain slant towards orcs, if anything. But as I get more people involved, I'm very keen to see um, what material they would like to see. Um, but I'm going to continue to talk about where I want to... the sort of going forward in the channel and some of the things that I'm planning to do. Um, some of it does indeed actually involve orcs, uh, and quite a lot of it does not. <laughs> so you can see some of the things that we're going to do as well. But I thought this could be a fun little diversion. Right, so first I thought we would go over um, these various snotlings. There's four pictures that are on the, G the Warhammer community website, and I grabbed them. Um, I'm going to be recording this separately, so if GW isn't, if a representative of Games Workshop happens to watch this and decides, yeah, that's not a really nice thing to have in a video, this will be removable. If they're nice to me and contact me directly, I'm be more than happy to uh, remove this section if need be for legal reasons but I thought we could have a look at these pictures and have a talk about them um, I think that should probably be okay but yeah I grabbed these pictures directly from uh, the Warhammer community website and um, the first thing I wanted to kind of point out is is that the likelihood is, is these guys are on 25s um, I thought we'd go into it in some detail now and then we'll have a look at the remaining pictures, uh, including the pump wagon at the end. Now, the the one on the top right with the mushroom looks just a little bit sort of slightly more swole than your average snotling that you would find on the, the previous pump wagon that was available until fairly recently on the GW website. The one that's wearing sort of the wizard's outfit um, it's probably going to be a little difficult for people to use outside of like a fantasy concept and in our sort of 40k land that might be a bit more difficult to use but again not impossible there's lots of ways to make that work and the one with the noisemaker yeah it's, it's a you know trumpets and, and horns and not a new thing to snotlings so these look like they're on 25s and, and I can say that with some level of confidence for one thing the Augurs have uh, nob Noblers in their team who in the previous version of Blood Bowl they were snotlings, they were supposed to be snotlings anyway and uh, Noblers just got added in because obviously well they fitted more with modern Augurs the sort of Augur Blood Bowl team technically predates the Augur Kingdom range so Noblers weren't really around the first time that the snotling and Augur team was really a thing so the whole idea of the Snotlings getting their own team to one side is interesting. Well, I'm sort of intrigued by how they're going to make them make Snotlings any worse than the Noblers that kind of come with their Augurs. Um, one, I think this might be partly one of the reasons why the Snotlings are looking a bit more muscular and, and tough looking and fatter than the old Snotlings that they're replacing. Not that this is unusual. I think this kind of fits, actually, with the common law you get with snotlings. Let's move on to the next set. So we've got these ones as well. Uh, these look quite interesting. I'm interested by the, the heads. The heads are an interesting compromise. They look like they're trying to sort of bridge the gap between the very old snotlings, which we'll see because I've got some of them painted up um, on my hobby desk at the moment, and the sort of ones that sort of look like diminutive Gretchen that you got with like the the pump wagon and the snots that were available for, for Gorkamorka, which is where I think the inspiration... I think they, they were planning at some point to do sort of a modern smot, snotling regiment alongside the uh, the pump wagon itself, but I don't think it ever happened. I, I think they kept the, the very old snotlings that they made in like the 80s or early 90s and, and kept those throughout until they just stopped making them available. So these guys look a little more sort of wider than normal but note how 
in most cases they take up you can see that the leg span is exactly sort of like very very much in the center of the 25 mil base it's kind of suggests it's probably around 12 12 13 millimeters wide which will come that'll uh, be kind of crucial with what we're talking about later when we're trying to figure out how big these guys actually are the reason I can say with confidence that these guys are on 25s rather than 32s is is there is no there is no slot at the front of the base uh, also the the runs uh, the noblest from the auger kit like I said were also are also on 25s so it makes no sense that like snotlings that are going to be probably a bit smaller than the noblers would be on bigger bases and also if they were on bigger bases they'd be on 32s they'd be getting the blood ball 32 mil bases that have a little slot at the front which is always kept open and always on shore because you can slot the ball onto it here's the last three um it does look like the snotlings are getting some level of specialists so they're getting some strange playing pieces um so obviously to break up the fact that they're all most likely strength one, I thought that they maybe might give the entire team disturbing presence, but I doubt that will happen. So as you can see, um, these are 25s. So in spite of the fact that they look quite big, remember they're on 25 mil basis. So these are going to, these guys are going to be pretty small, I, I argue. And then finally we've got the pump wagon itself. Now the pump wagon is almost definitely going to be on a 32 millimeter base and the reason that i can say that with pretty solid level of of uh, confidence is that augers tr blood ball augers and blood ball trolls and all of the big guys that they've done so far they're desperately trying to make them fit on 32s and you can kind of see these guys are very much designed like they, they obviously designed this sort of pump wagon to take up like as small an area as they can and look how badly the overhang is on that like, you know, I'm kind of astonished that they've done this. And as, as brilliant as it is to get, like, a new pump wagon and you can see that they've tried to make it like the original pump wagon rather than the intermediate pump wagon that we got um, until recently. So it's much more like the very old school one and kind of quaint looking and it's like made from half of a barrel and it looks really quirky. This is a really unimaginative thing to do to make like the pump wagon rather than something else, you know, and fitting it onto like a that size base is a little jarring, I must say. Even as I'm someone who's not as fussed about overhang as a lot of people are, like I'm still kind of irritated that Orc Boys are on 32mm bases. I'm not wrong, you guys are, shut, out, shut the hell up. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, yeah, so you can see the, the snotlings look quite big, but again... Once you see this model at its appropriate scale, they're not going to seem quite as big, I would argue. And because this thing's on a 32mm base, and because that's half of a barrel, I think you're probably going to see these guys to be... These guys are going to be a lot smaller. Still, they're still going to be bigger than the current ones that... Well, the, the previous ones anyway. But we're going to have a look at some of those now. So, first of all, I just want to show you this briefly. This is a Blood Bowl base. Uh, 32 mil one as you can see it's got the hole this is going to be the size that the pump wagon is probably going to be on and this is the um the old resin pump wagon i've just um i'm just holding it together with blue tack at the moment because i've got this kit and i'm still thinking i'll probably convert it for my snow goblin army so um i'm not going to keep it as it is but as you can see it just wouldn't fit on a base this small um given that the the current one is like half of a barrel and i mean this can front works quite nicely is like half of a barrel you could see that it could sit quite nicely on top of it and i think this is probably about the size the the barrel actually is and even with the sort of front barrel on the front i did have something for that before and i seem to have misplaced it i did actually have a barrel but um yeah, I, I think this is probably more or less what you're looking at. It's something along this size. And then you're going to have like the snotlings hanging off it. Um, and you've got like a, a bigger barrel up front like that. 
and I hope I didn't waste all of that. I probably did, but yeah, it's a sort of like, sort of that sort of scale. But anyway, um, here's some of the old school snotlings. These these are ancient. These these are probably older than me actually. Um, there's probably not a great deal in it, but these are these are the oldest range of snotlings. Right, so these are the pump wagon snotlings uh, that I just sort of chucked on some bases with some blue tack just to give you an idea. As you can see, there's already a scale difference. There's already a scale difference between the two. And if we take those like this for now, um, take those there and then we add like a 40k grot you can see there's not that much of a difference in size already really between the grot and the snorling i still see the difference personally like the the difference is notable to me uh, particularly because this guy's got kind of an upright pose if we use this one you know it's the the difference in scale is a bit more obvious um, and here we've got like um, it's a grot from a big gun kit um, you can see the see the scale difference and this is a nobbler some nobblers from my blood ball team that I'm working on at the moment um, these guys are a lot sort of more wirier than the um, 40k Gretchen are um to give you an idea and this is a blood ball goblin that's um it's a special character throws the bombs whose current name escapes me i can't can't believe i can't think of that and then there's this is a a, a nobbler cheerleader conversion i'm doing that's kind of a a water boy and those are sponges but he's acting like he's a cheerleader um so yeah as you can see they are quite small, but obviously these are a bit taller. And then if you make the make them a teeny bit more muscular, and you they've already got kind of like the pot bellies a little bit. Snotlings are regarded commonly as greedy, very very greedy. So you've you've already got that kind of idea. And if you just make that a little thicker, you've you've pretty much got the scale. And look, if we look at these. This is obviously 25 mil bases. And if we um, if we pop upwards, so this is this is basically it for the the hobby camera. Now we're just doing the last bit. Now, if we look on top of them at the scale, I mean this probably wasn't probably wasn't the brightest idea. Actually, the angle probably is a little better. Um, you look at this the space they take up in the middle of the 20 mil base but i reckon that's probably about um a centimeter to like 11 12 millimeters um leg span hasn't really changed too much whereas if we take the grots i mean granted these are on gorka mocha bases because most of the grots that i've got painted are the ones i use for gorka mocha or the ones I use for, and um, although I've got my big gun guys here as well, you can see that there is a significant difference in leg span um, for the grots. They take up more of the more of the base's width, which I think is kind of telling of scale, really. Um, kind of show you. Now, would they work as grots? I suppose, but. Um, it's going to be the the difference in scale is still going to be noticeable and if you kind of care you probably like you know you probably you want to like do something a little different with them um an awful lot of orc players don't really care and this kind of irritates me if i'm honest it i know it's pedanticism of the absolute zenith 
but like I want cool snortling models. I want snortlings. I want snortlings that look different to grots. And I want snortlings to finally have a place in 40k as well as not just Age of Sigmar slash fantasy or um or Blood Bowl. You know, I I want to see them back you know in 40k cuz why the hell not? Like why the hell not? And they've got all sorts of uses. And you could maybe even use them kind of in game, more or less. How you use them in 40k before is like ammunition for shock attack guns. And then maybe some people wouldn't claim that it's grots that get fired through them but when they have no clue about the orc fluff. Um, anyway, yeah. So I think that gives you a kind of idea of the kind of scale of the old. Snotling stuff. And you can see this stuff is really dated. Like, I love them. They are so characterful, but they are dated. It's about time we got something a little bit, you know. And these are my favourites. I still absolutely love the ones from the pump wagons. I need to find a use for them. I might use them as this thing, and I might not. I don't know. But, again, there we go. There's another one with a trumpet. Like, these guys are, these guys are really characterful. And... You make them a little bit more swole, and you're pretty much there. You know, they're, they're already, you know, they're already significantly bigger than they used to be in the 80s. And a lot of people say that snortlings are tiny. They're not that small. They're not that much smaller than grots are. Um, so the scale isn't too much of a creep. The creep, the creep is there, but it's not that ridiculous. Anyway, that's all I really wanted to show you from this. Thanks for bearing with what is basically some pedanticism that I needed to exercise from my system. I've got um, obviously more hobby content planned and next week, um, I was going to do it this week but there's been a little bit too much on my plate, I haven't really had time, but next week I'm planning on doing a live stream. The principal reason why I'm doing a live stream is I'm, I'm going to finish the fur off on the, uh, the, the, the green stuff fur I've been doing on those trolls, fin finish those trolls off completely. I, I'm trying to experiment with the heads and see if I can come up with some clever ways to make them look a little good and also finish off the technique, give people um, a better look better look at it. I'm, I'm trying ways to, to make it look a bit different. I've also invested in better lighting since I did that video. So hopefully I can even showcase the green stuff, green stuff work a little bit. But obviously the main thing that I'm kind of excited about is the prospect of people joining me during the stream and sort of giving me some direct feedback on stuff they'd like to see in the channel or stuff they're interested in me doing. I'm kind of a bit directionless. I've, I've got a lot of things that I'm going to do, so if nobody's got any particular interests or any particular desires that they they want for tutorials or they want, they want more content of a particular kind for me to do, there's a lot of things I'm going to try and I'm hoping people are going to find something interesting. I thought for the remainder of this video I would talk about things that um, I'm working on in the hobby and also I'll probably talk about a couple of the videos I'm thinking about doing soon and then people can tell me whether or not they would like that or not in the comments below this video or you know if I don't get anything either way I'll, I'll just try it and see what works, see what people watch, keep an eye on the analytics but either way it, I'll learn what people want to see. So I, I wrote a little list down of various sort of current army slash skirmish projects that I'm working on. There's quite a long list of things. I'm going to go through the entire list. The principal reason I'm going to do that is is that I want you guys to know more or less all of what I'm working on. And then if there's something that really catches your eye that you're like, oh yeah, more about that please, you can tell me. And then I'll, I'll do some more on that. Now I'm guessing, I'm going to mention my 40k stuff briefly. Now, 40k, I've not really had much of a hobby mojo for quite a while. And, not going to lie, I'm going to mention Gene Steeler cults. I might as well mention them now. I'll start with 40k. Screw it. I've got a Gene Steeler cult army. And it's part guard, part converted stuff that I was working on. And I said before, in my previous video, before there were Gene Steelers, which was wrong. What I meant to say was before the Gene Steeler cult models came out, I was working on a Gene Steeler cult. And I was using Imperial Guard rules. And I made them from cultists, as you could see, because there wasn't any neophyte boxes out then. Although I still prefer mine. But anyway, yeah. Um, the obviously the only thing that I particularly sort of follow, still bother with in 40k is orcs. 
specifically in my case, Royal Grotz. I don't really, like, 8th edition kind of really killed my mojo for that. Um, obviously, with Saga of the Beast finally giving, throwing a frickin' bone to Grotz, they, they deserved for quite a long time, and with the new Macquarie model that looks really sweet, um, I finally had something to give me a little bit of inspiration. So I'm finally going to be doing a little bit more work um, on some 40k stuff. And I thought I would do a video on doing some, like, how to make counts as um, hit orc HQs that are made from grot models or, or goblin models. And I probably should do quite a lot of videos in how to pilfer and plunder from the various sort of sources that you can use to make sort of cool grot stuff. Because it seems like grots are really in vogue at the moment. Like there's a lot of people wanting to do sort of grot material. And I've been working on making sort of various grot armies and, and grot stuff for various different sort sort of things and, and goblin stuff in fantasy as well, fantasy and slash AOS as well. Um so I've worked with quite a lot of the kits, so I know them pretty well. So it's potential material there if people are interested. Right, in AOS I do quite a lot, but I've I've scaled it back. I've sold a lot of my AOS. I'm kinda get a bored kinda get a bored of it now. Um it's not it's better than it's better for the casual player than fantasy ever was, but it's such a poorly designed core game that it really, really needs to make some fundamental changes to stop being irritating. And it and all of the all of the kind of failings just allow that sort of tournament mentality to seep back into the game. And it's getting a little too focused around competitive players and competitive play and like one of the things that I really like about AOS is that it's far more hobby friendly than fantasy ever was. Like far more. Like that's what I want. I want something that gets my creative juices going. And I'm kind of tired of GW on one hand showcasing all these ridiculously cool conversion inspired armies and then removing entire factions from from play and trying to crowbar people into taking one particular faction with maybe like a handful of allies with like really uninspired undynamic un unambitious new army designs that just disappoint more than anything like i do love aos i've got a deeply deeply deep soft spot for it but um they need to do more to that game to really make it shine because it's declining in my eyes and it's a real shame because I do love modelling for it. I really do. But it's that game needs something. It it needs some spark that it, it currently lacks. Um, the two the the armies that I tend to play, I've, I've got I I love corn. I've got basically everything corn. I've got a, a crap ton of demons. I've got a crap ton of um, the rest of blades. So I've got the bloodbound as well. A lot of bloodbound. An awful lot of bloodbound. I've got inspired by the guy came up with the iron horde sort of law and i kind of thought oh yeah i like that idea of being beholden to a demon prince who's got a lord of lord of armor and, and for that demon to represent that demon prince model i use the really cool one from forge world it's one of the few forge world models that i actually am proud to own <laughs> so we can one day i might do a forge world rant um I, i'm trying to keep negative stuff on this off this channel if i can help it but uh yeah one day we might talk about for, forge world resin it's not today though <laughs> and i've got also quite a lot of safety darkness i'm doing a, a safety darkness celt army i need to Im i need to improve the paint job but this is the model that inspired it initially um i'm gonna i'll be showcasing um i'll be showcasing my models in much more de detail later on I wish there was characters on chariots for this reason, but this is my sort of character that isn't a character called Bloodicke. Um Just a very straightforward conversion, really, from the Dark Oath War, uh, War Queen with a few sort of um, Skaven, bit, uh, Skaven um, Escher, Escher bits added on. And I think that's from a Dark Elf chariot, the, uh, the spear that I've got. Um... And then these are horrendously expensive. They cost me a lot of money to make, but they look really nice. My 
archers that I use as I use as Ungor raiders generally um, as part of like the, the sort of um, as part of the Slaves of Darkness army. And I am working on some some beats of chaos guys as well. I'm planning to do some samurai beats of chaos at some point, some samurai inspired. Uh, but uh, these are made from ashes, and then the the torso comes from the Medusa kit. And I've been using the Medusas for other stuff as well. And um, you you might remember from last video where I had some snake stealers. So um, the kit, the basic kit of the Medusa is expensive, but I've been using it for two different sets of conversions, and I knew that going in, which is why I chose Medusa so that I had those two different projects that I could support at the same time. Nevertheless, it's still expensive, but I don't really care too much about spending more to make a cut to make a a, un a unique unit that looks really nice that's more or less what the hobby is for me really um okay so that's uh more or less it uh, obviously people know about my snow goblin stuff already from the from the trolls the trolls are back there you can maybe sort of see them just over there they're on the they're on the bookshelf at the moment um i've obviously also got a goblin contingent with that as well naturally um i'm still working on those um I'm trying to combine goblin units from all the various AOSs. I know there's going to be people screaming in the, in there might be people in the comment section going, "They're grots, they're not grots, they're goblins, uh, they're goblins." GW can call them the whatever maximum copyright name they like. They're damn goblins. Anyway, <laughs> don't know why I care so much, but they're goblins. Um, but anyway, I've got that Snow Goblin force that I'm doing. I'm using Goblin units from all the various things. So I'm using Nobler stuff from Old Kingdoms, the Goblin, the common Goblin stuff that was with the Oryx until recently, the Orcs until recently, um, when they got canned. And I presume they've got Legends rules, which I'll have to use, whatever. Fucking shitheads. And then, obviously, some Night Goblin, sp Gloom Spites, whatever they call them now. You know, those various three. And I'm just doing a Grand Alliance Goblins, Goblin faction. Just Grand Alliance Destruction and just all Goblins. And then some Trolls. And I'm planning about sort of 3-4k worth of that. Um, various sort of creative things. Um, one of the principal ideas I've got is doing the Doom Diver as a ski slope. As like a movable ski slope and have like the, the Goblins, like some Goblins, probably from the Wolf Rider kit, I think, from... Just sort of like going down the slope and then like a couple of them flying in the air. And then um, for Fanatics, uh, it's going to be largely goblins and big snowballs. Um, and I happen to have quite a lot of the goblin from the from the giant kit, the flat goblin from the giant kit, because quite a lot of my friends just give me them for, for nothing. So I've got a few of those somewhere that will come in useful for stuff like that. And then, you know got other ideas alongside that as well and just ways to make them look a little more interesting uh, the thing that will be difficult is coming out with what uh what heroes to use from the various factions and, and stuff like that and how to make it work but i'm really enjoying the project as it stands at the moment we'll take it from there and i'll try and come up with some kind of creative cool stuff that people might be interested in obviously as it's there's there's a lot of green stuff that's going to be going into that faction. So if anybody's still unsure of how my fur technique works, there's going to be plenty more opportunity to see it in action. So um, we've got um, old hammer. I'm doing dogs of war. Yeah, I won't. Um, a few people are like, "Oh, you're getting ready for new warhammer." No. I'll play the additions that were decent, fifth and six. I'm not doing anything else. Sorry, I have I have little belief in the capacity for Games Workshop's design team to come up with a decent new rule set for Warhammer Fantasy Battle, and I'm fully expecting them to do their usual exaggerating things for uh, the for maximum copyright effect. And you know, I'm just not interested. I'm I'm just not interested in that. Uh, that's not the old world that I care about. Um, because I much prefer the old the old, the old hammer law to whatever AOS is. AOS's law is is terrible. I'm sorry, it just is. Um, I'm not going to go into why. I'm not going to defend it. You don't. If you like it, cool. I could never like it, and I don't think it'll ever be good. 
I said it. Anyway, I've also got uh, quite a lot of Tomb King stuff, and I've got two different Tomb King armies for fantasy, which is weird because I've got the proper uh, Egyptian stuff, and I've got I've got a um, a friend sold me a, a very Japanese slash Asian theme Tomb King army, and I'm expanding that partly with models that I've acquired from. Oh, I can't remember what company did them now. Can't think of it at the moment, but we'll we'll cover that down the line. I don't know if they still sell like stuff that they're casting now because they seem to have moved almost exclusively into selling three um, D print files. Um, so we'll see we'll see what happens. But um, I've got like a few of those minis that I'm going to be converting, and a few that I'll probably make from scratch as well, just making more undead sort of sort of undead samurai tomb kings. Um, trying to come up with clever ways to make them look really cool. For more time, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in doing some more time at some point soon. I've been stockpiling Skaven. Uh, I've got some original Sisters of Sigma, but I'm going to be converting Carnival and Chaos and Possessed and Undead Warbands from various bits. Same with Skaven, actually, as well. Um, converting bits. I've got some bits already, so I've managed to find... Um, I used to find a, a like a, a Johan the Knife. I've got Johan the Knife. I've had an Aina for as long as I can remember. I think it's actually the one that I got free with a White Dwarf um, back in the day when they gave you metal characters for free. Like, I've got a, a couple of those knocking around. Um, so yeah, I'm looking at doing more time like that. I'm, I'm going to be doing more time merchants. I was Legion. Mentioned it briefly. I play uh, Rebels and Separatists. Um, but I'm probably not going to be doing a lot of conversions, so I'm, you know, mostly just going to be painting them. I don't even know if I'm going to do tutorials of that on here. I doubt it. I tend not to do... I, I've not really... I've not really thought about... I, I've been thinking quite a long time about whether or not I can justify doing tutorials for painting. And my painting's alright, but, like, there's, like, Squid, well, Squidmar, Goobertown, and Miniac, and Rob Alderman, Alderman, and and uh, Juan Hidalgo and like people like that like why would you need me <laughs> like <laughs> I'm not as good as them by a factory mile <laughs> uh, so I probably won't do too many painting tutorials but we'll see and there's a there's a guy who specializes in just doing anything to do with Star Wars and just painting them I can't remember his name I'll I'll um if I remember on I'll put a link in the description blood ball yeah, I love Blood Bowl. I'm going to be doing a lot of Blood Bowl things. I, I did have a list, but I'm just going to say lots of Blood Bowl. I actually want to try at some point to make all of the star players from scratch using either Kit Bash or Kit Bash and Sculpting or other conversions and things. Basically, and, and maybe even third party, but more or less just any means of getting them without giving Forge World money. Um, Again, that might be a rant. I'll have to have one day. But I, uh, I largely, I would say, I'm not that enamoured with some of the models they've made. There's a couple of them, particularly the Wood Elf one, that I kind of want to buy from them. But uh, some of the some of the characters they've got for the for the Blood Bowl sets, I would say, they're not really worth the effort. I could probably match that. And I'm not as talented as their designers. So that says a lot. Hero quest and engineering things. I've got a lot of hero quest stuff. You guys have seen some of it. Um, been uh, mounting various stuff that I've got. I think these are the crooked dice skeletons that I bought not too long ago. Actually, I've been mounting them on zealot miniature resin bases that are very familiar to people who um, you know like hero quests because they're very much in the old style. Um, I'm doing quite a lot of stuff for. Hero Quest and other engineering games and things like that, of that nature. I'm getting obsessed with those sorts of games again, and I've got ideas to make my own games. So there's a few other games I want to try, and you know, all sorts of variations. And quite a few of my friends are interested in that. So I'm going to be doing a lot of stuff for Hero Quest and and similar games. I've got it's similar with modern zombie survival. Like I've been buying an awful lot of stuff from the various companies that supply that. I figured I would probably do some videos of those at some point down the line, goodness knows when, uh, showing off some of the stuff that I've got. I've been painting quite a lot of it recently. It's mainly why I haven't been doing a great deal of videos, because I've actually just been painting, and my painting isn't good enough 
really for a tutorial video and my progress is really slow and I do it in batches because I don't particularly enjoy doing it. Although I got a shock when I watched Miniac's video and he said he didn't enjoy painting that much. And I was just like, dude, if you don't enjoy it, who, who, who does? Seriously, man. Like, oh God, it's just Goober Town, isn't it? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah um I, I buy a lot of um basically any zombie survival or anything kind of cool like that i've got a few sort of game things in mind for that and also i've got some mdf terrain of that sort of stuff so i'm going to be doing quite a quite a fair bit of that so people might be interested in seeing some terrain tutorials i'm, I'm looking at ways to make it look better I backed a couple of kickstarters that'll help make my mdf terrain look even better because i've got like some resin details that uh, scatter terrain and, and bits and pieces that I can add to stuff like, like resin radiators. I know, man. It's, it's awesome. Anyway, Gaslands. I've got a tub over there full of cars. So um, I'm always on the lookout for cool ideas for Gaslands. I really need to make some more Gasland teams and some more Gasland cars at some point. I absolutely love Gaslands. It's great. And I'm also quite eagerly awaiting the uh, spaceship game... Uh, made by the same guy but it's it's been delayed anyway i'll talk about i'll probably do a video talking about it when when the time arises um oh yeah and that's more or less it except for like talking more about dungeon scenery and, and dungeon terrain uh yeah that's a thing actually that reminds me i've been thinking about doing some unboxing some cracking unboxings i've recently been buying quite a lot of things i've got um an order got some orders just over here actually uh, these from Grim School uh, slash War Game Exclusive, uh, which are sort of like little cool gobliny grotty things that are totally not for 40k orcs. They're gorgeous. I mean, very decent quality resin. Um, they look amazing. Um, I want to be. I've got those to unbox and, and build. I've got a. Hassle free order. So, um, people are probably thinking anybody who's ordered from Hassle Free before will be like, where's the sweeties? Too late, already ate them. Um, you don't get this shape without eating sweets the second you see them. And this is a very lovely Zealot Minis order that I made. I've actually got another one on the way as well, um, because something I've been after for quite a while and that I'm going to boast about in a second, and people. People who know the, the company are going to be really annoyed at me and curse my name. Um, but I've got um, I've got that order coming along and I thought I would do a Zealot Minis when the second box arrives. I'll do a double unboxing and show you some of the dungeon terrain that Zealot does. Amazing dungeon terrain. If you like Hero Quest, it's expensive, obviously, because you're buying resin. Um... But I thought I would also probably do some videos on how to do, how to get like cool alternative dungeon pieces, and hopefully you can get everything that I'm going to show you. I think I mentioned some of the old old school stuff. Oh, that is one thing for my for forty k orcs. I am going to be doing um, very slowly an old school new school army. So it's it's the idea is is that it's old school aesthetic but with modern miniatures and modern design. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do is, I really hate the current flash kit. kit. I despise it. I think the guns look like bricks. They're awful. And no, all guns aren't supposed to look like that. Um, no, I'm not having it. So, um, this is the old Badrox flash kits from back in the day. And as it happens, there's like a few page spread on it because it's from a... Obviously, all these books were compilations from White Dwarf anyway. But this is uh, one one guy's bad rooks. I can't remember whose they are, actually. It might, be, it might even be Andy C's. But it's probably Nigel Stillman's. Um, I wonder if it says... Um, uh, doesn't. I can't recall. Um... Ah, they were just made for the studio themselves. Oh, wow, well, they were using Design Studio back then. Well, you learn something new every day. Uh, although, at least they had one back then. Uh, but, yeah. Um, 
I'm going to be making these, but updated. So very conveniently separate pictures for all the various individuals and what equipment they had. And I'm going to try and update each individual to the modern standard, probably using knobs rather than flash kits. I'll use parts of flash kit kits because I I bought whole boxes of flash kits just, just to get some resin grots that were exclusive. That's how much of a deal I give about my grots. The sad thing is I've sold those on, unfortunately. So I was getting rid of quite a lot of stuff back in that back then, but um still got some of them. So yeah. A few other things that I've got planned. I am gonna be probably doing some sort of top ten videos at some point. Some various sort of top ten list videos. My sort of idea I have, I mean this is quite a way down the road, it's going to be quite a while in the future but one of the things, because I'm actually finally getting around to painting everything and like finishing off all the things I've already painted one of the things that I'm sort of finally getting around to doing is, is painting my massive merch collection I, I own a lot of merchers from all sorts of companies, not just Games Workshop but like loads of different companies and Back in the day when blogs were a thing that people did, I did a blog where I listed my top 16 models that I had that I liked at the time and talked about why they were important and why I found them distinct and insignificant. And I thought about doing that again. And back when I did that, that was about 50-50 GW split with other companies and also including some Rackham stuff. Rackham being like a... I still own a lot of minis. And I did have the one rule of I had to own it. So I've sold a lot of the stuff. I sold everything that I had for War Machine and Hordes. And I wouldn't, they, these days, knowing the industry as I kind of do now and all of the extra new companies that have come up since, Priority Press would not get a look in, I'm afraid. So, like, but basically, that's one of the things is there's so many new companies now. I'm thinking about doing a whole bunch of lists because I can't just do one. Um, but I might even do like a top 100 minches that I own video and just do it in installments. So um, let me know if you if that's something that you would like. Um, it's still going to be a while off yet because I want to use pictures of my miniatures, the ones specifically that I own. And I would probably prefer it that they were painted. So I've got a lot of work on my hands before I do that video. But it's definitely something to aspire towards. I want to do in the future. I'm also looking at doing some sort of tips and ideas for storage and transport, uh, particularly of knickknacks, like how to transport um, like knickknacks for various games. If you buy, if you play any Fantasy Flight game, you need means to transport tokens, tokens and templates and things. Um, and I quite like that kind of problem solving and finding cool things to transport them in. Uh, so I thought I would do a couple of videos of, of doing stuff like that. And I, I play a lot of X-Wing and that's a problem that I'm constantly trying to solve as to how to transport all the various bits and pieces for it. And I've got quite a lot of X-Wing. Too much X-Wing. <laughs> and looking at various ways to transport it. So that's one of the things I'm going to be doing um, of late. So there's quite a lot to do. The next video is going to be a live stream. Come along, watch it, um, talk to me. Uh, <laughs> I get I get very lonely. <laughs> and tell me what you'd like to see in the channel. And you can ask me questions and I can try my best to answer them. Also, this is a perfect opportunity. I'm going to plug it again. I want to do a regular feature on this channel. Hopefully one day, maybe regular. A conversion clinic where if you come to me with an idea you have for a conversion. For any company, any game. Either it's one you've done already or it's one you're planning to do and you're either wanting advice of how to start or advice for how to improve in future or ways to make something look a little better. Send me pictures, send me questions, give me as much detail as you can. Give me an Elias to know you by or a name to refer to you as. And you know, as much as information as you can give me that you're comfortable to, for it to be shared on the internet. And um, I'll give you what advice I can about what kits to use, where to get them. Obviously, you probably want to tell me what budget you have and whether or not you need it for tournaments or if you need it for a tournament, can you use third party, etc. And stuff of that nature. And I'll 
do my best to give you a hand. That's something I've been wanting to do for this channel for quite a while because it's more or less what started me doing the hobby get back in the day was uh, I'd be in the local games workshop and I'd be faffing about one of my various silly conversion projects. Uh, something like these. And someone would come in, would have like a daft idea, and almost invariably I'd be they'd be pointed in my direction, particularly if it pertained to orcs, but often if it pertained to anything, I ended up being the go-to guy. In the time that I was there, there was three principal conversion competitions, and uh, I, I won two of them, and the other one I didn't enter. Uh, so, like, that's kind of the... That's kind of my my very much my 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 jam my my joy. As a matter of fact, I'll show you one of the things that won. Close up, it's not great, but from a distance, it looks impressive. <laughs> this is a thing I made. I I I don't I don't talk about how much it cost me, but um, it's a dragon I made, and um, it's inspired by Bahamut from the fantasy, Final Fantasy games, particularly ten, actually. But um, it's the Archeon dragon. Um, but instead of the Archeon, we've got like the front bit is from a magma drop, so hence the name the Archeon magma drop, and then a lot of green stuff. And I didn't have a lot of time to do it, so because I, uh, I procrastinated and procrastinated, so the green stuff work is not as crisp as I would have liked. Um, that's the base bit is from the Dragon Fate Dias. I don't know if you can still buy it or not. Um, and then cork covered in green stuff and I accidentally damaged it because this is uh, technically pinned because there's like a hole actually that's that's made it quite a bit secure actually that's not too bad um but um got like a plastic hard tube that goes into the into the thing's tail and secures it down it goes quite a ways in there but um I dropped a book on it. <laughs> So as you can see, it's still a bit loose. So I'm going to have to do some um, green stuff work and some gluing. Probably use a hot glue gun, actually, um, to just secure it so it doesn't move again. And then finally get some paint on it. So, yeah, that's the kind of crazy shit that I do for no particular reason. But that's that's what I really enjoy about the hobby. And I, the reason I start this channel is to try and encourage people to do that. So... This is why there's a conversion clinic. This is why I'm covering conversions. This is why I'm talking about all the various things that I'm planning to do. I want people converting. I want to see more of it. So, yeah, I'll catch you guys next time.